Hi guys and welcome to thrustzone.com. This is Mohit Soni. What is in front of you is the Toyota Urban Cruiser High Rider in its all-wheel drive mild hybrid Avatar. Yes, you've been waiting for the hybrid, but uh, we have to tell you about this mild hybrid all-wheel drive top of the line manual version as well because this is something that we've also been waiting for apart from the hybrid which was a surprise and something that we are also looking forward to. But this is something that has been a demand for a long time that a mid-size SUV hasn't uh, you know really offered all-wheel drive in this segment. And Maruti Toyota are here with that and uh, seen here in the high rider what is it like and uh, i think this is our first impression uh, of the high rider in the real world we've shown you a walk around of the high rider a uh, couple of months ago when it was revealed for the first time so let's quickly get into uh, you know driving and other details and what we've experienced because we've told you a lot about this car already uh, in the real world in this wide back scheme and very futuristic front end design it looks uh, nice to me from the front end this is my favorite of the lot and uh, because of the twin DRL setup and the very futuristic look that this car is offering with these very nice housings for the headlamp here you don't have of course fog lamps below and uh, again a very nicely well sculpted front design if you ask me the alloy wheels also look really nice we've done a bit of off-roading so they're a bit dirty and uh, at the side you can see it is something uh, that looks plain vanilla at the same time it is new to the Indian market I think with the front and rear design uh, this design should age rather well than we expect uh, because again at the back you can see a very futuristic look uh, with these tail lamps here and these uh, turn indicator and uh, reflector along with uh, the uh, reversing light coming at the back you can see this is the part where you get the neo drive badging and uh, there's a camera here since we are at the back let me show you what the boat looks like pretty large and uh, yeah almost 450 liters there's a light here there's a charging point here and uh, there is a hook here as well the new drive badging as you can see getting at the back uh, behind my own driving position you can see Legroom is good actually, knee room is okay, uh, headroom is definitely tight, uh, if I can show you, uh, it's it's tight, so taller passengers will not be really comfortable at the back, but uh, sitting slightly uh, inclined, I see that there is uh, hardly any uh, under thigh support on offer as well, you've got charging points here, so uh, you've got very basic AC vents, uh, we wish there was a climate control to completely change the uh, mindset and the segmentation uh, with the inclusion of something new you've got this armrest which is slightly small but cup and can holder is very very large and uh, that is the door pad here along with uh, materials which are good but could have been better all around the glass area is definitely big you've got a light here which is very premium but again uh, it's a premium car feature which you don't see everywhere but uh, it's a halogen light not an LED light and that is uh, what is being much talked about is a very wafer thin uh, material used for the sunroof cover and as you can see even with uh, it's very bright and very hot this afternoon there's a lot of light coming inside the cabin and uh, the AC is surprisingly at 2 usually at 1 in uh, you know cars like this which is a very powerful AC unit uh, thank you uh, for these AC vents here but they are small and like I said climate control would have been ideal um, three abreast I think should not be a problem uh, if you are normal size adults uh, there is enough space I can definitely see three people sitting comfortably here at the back without brushing their shoulders by a long shot keyless entry and go push button start 360 degree camera hill descent control of course this is all wheel drive getting inside you can see a very familiar layout that we've seen uh, because this is a car based on the Maruti platform so very a lot of things are in fact uh, similar the screen uh, as always provides with this energy flow meter this is a mild hybrid it still uh, sort of charges the battery and then gives you the kick uh, which I'll explain while I'm uh, driving that's the dial for the uh, sport mode and the snow mode along with if you push it on auto it decides what it is and then you can lock the diff as well um, you've got a very small armrest here uh, space but this is slidable so that's really nice the glove box is huge but uh, this particular variant is the all-wheel drive top of the line variant so it doesn't get cooling or illumination you've got uh, charging points here and uh, you've got some space to keep some stuff probably your mobile will fit in there better and uh, the screen works really well it looks really nice it's not a uh, 
very very colorful screen but uh, the size is right the fonts are right everything uh, feels right apple carplay android auto works really well and uh, you've got a toyota connect as well um, music system is good could have been better at this price point and uh, overall quality of the cabin as you can see there is some very nice leather finish here with contrast stitching uh, it's seen here as well uh, again uh, plastics are good not great and uh, yeah again very nice uh, interior uh, overall but it could have been better i think the hybrid version that we showed you earlier was slightly different and slightly felt more premium because it had more features this doesn't have ventilated seats as well uh, missing on this and uh, i think they should make it in the future because that is a requirement which is going to come through customers and uh, toyota and maruti will have to fulfill that and uh, very similar looking instrument cluster you've got all the features here from this dial here uh, this is also analog meter is not a digital meter like the hybrid but it has a fair share of uh, you know gizmos as you can see right here and uh, yeah little basic for for this all wheel drive uh, top of the line variant and this button looks like uh, you know something uh, that could have housed something else but it, it felt like a stop stop button at the very first but then again it is a hazard lamp button here and uh, you should not use it in the tunnels you should use it only when you want to side by the you know park by the side of the road and uh, yeah that's a, a thing that we always want to say so this is how i'm going to convey that uh, taking this opportunity uh, the steering wheel uh, kind of feels old school and modern at the same time the design is very circular very stubby it's not very big per se but there is obviously no problem in holding it and getting a grip on it uh, while driving fast or slow is not a problem the switches again here also feel basic and something we expected that uh, uh, could have been revised for this brand new you know very important model for both the manufacturers but it's not being done you have automatic irvm of course the sunroof is panoramic which is segment leading indeed and uh, you've got these nice soft touch materials yes here as well as well as here so the quality is there it's much better uh, than any other product these uh, two manufacturers have built together but then again there are certain points which it could have been better uh, we wish the hybrid was a complete mimic of uh, you know uh, the all wheel drive should have been the entire mimic of the hybrid but then the pricing would have gone through the roof and the varianting structure which we've already explained you on our website uh, explains what is actually happening um yeah that's it that's what the interior is all about let's jump to the driving part now so what is the urban cruiser high rider 1.5 mild hybrid all wheel drive with a manual gearbox like to drive well this is a smooth engine it's a refined engine uh, it makes hardly any noise inside the cabin the insulation is well in check when it comes to road wind and engine noise this time because maruti and toyota want to make it feel premium and they've succeeded at that uh, it is a very refined motor it's a very easy to drive car and uh, there is good low end and mid range torque uh, but it's not great it's not what you expect but it's a naturally aspirated 1.5 motor and uh, you should not expect any uh, turbo you know inspired performance in the low end and mid range um even the top end is just about okay uh, but it can cruise at 120 140 if you want uh, the five speed gearbox well you say why is there no six speed gearbox because maruti uh, has tuned this engine in a way where it doesn't require even with bs6 phase 2 emissions one of the most strictest emissions uh, the guys at maruti and toyota decided to you know not put a six speed because they've been managed to meeting all the fuel efficiency requirements all the driving requirements and all the emission requirements then uh, it also shows something and it also because it's slightly low on power and torque and if you give it a sixth gear the mid range when you you know most people do not really downshift and overtake they use the same top gear to you know move ahead when uh, you know they want to overtake so when you put it in sixth gear the revs will be down to almost 1000 rpm and that will take a lot of time uh, to you know move ahead so keeping that aspect also in mind uh, the fifth is slightly tall but uh, it gets the job done uh, but it is always recommended that you downshift and move ahead uh, when you want to overtake with a full passenger load or even when you are uh, solo or with just four people on board or you know with no luggage or with luggage you should always downshift and swiftly up, uh, overtake because that's how you do it and uh, that's how in the future we can get uh, maruti and toyota to give us six speed gearboxes as well um apart from that uh, this engine is we are, we are very familiar with this mild hybrid setup the battery is bigger under the bonnet and uh, it stores the charge uh, once you brake uh, via the isg motor uh, the alternator starter motor and uh, you get a bit of burst of torque at low end and mid range but that is uh, very barely noticeable uh, with the manual uh, you can feel it but it's you know it usually feels uh, you know you can get a hold of it and understand it in a automatic version which is not present here right now and uh, yeah 
this engine again uh, is very smooth very refined and very fuel efficient as well you can get well uh, 11 to 12 in the city 15 to 16 on the highway which is a very good number indeed if you are into steady driving uh, you can get even more numbers and if you are truly into steady driving and want to see the highest number of the lot just get the hybrid instead uh, this is an all wheel drive version and uh, the off roading aspect is pretty good uh, it can go through a lot and uh, what we saw is that it got out of six sticky situations we found a place where there was still uh, you know a muddy area which was wet sand and uh, all of that it just went through it really well and there was hardly any effort getting out of that sticky situation over rocks and ruts and mud and uh, even through certain articulations uh, smaller ones it went through really well uh, if you get some time to put it through a real off road test uh, i don't think that's also going to be necessary because this is still again not a hardcore off roader it's something that is going to provide you with all weather capability if you are down uh, you know up north or in the west uh, and you get stuck in the sand on daily basis if you are in rajasthan if you are in north india if you stay in the himalayas in the himachal region then this uh, all wheel drive version makes a lot of sense for you and uh, again uh, the performance is just about okay the fuel efficiency is at least much better than its rivals when they are equipped with the same 1.5 liter naturally aspirated motor and that's where the toyota urban cruiser high rider sets in uh, it makes a lot of sense and uh, in that area and uh, the pricing is also right but the feature list also could have been slightly better i think if you are willing to pay and uh, if there is enough demand then uh, you can actually uh, wait for some time and uh, you know get the variant where uh, there will be a lot of features but if you want it right now i don't think there is anything wrong with that uh, pricing is slightly higher even with those features missing but then again what you're getting is toyota's famed reliability a very good design on the inside uh, on the outside as well and uh, there is room for improvement in many ways but then again it is also a package that falls perfectly uh, balances out well and uh, that is why you should consider the toyota urban cruiser high rider because for some people it's going to be a package which is going to be irresistible at the same time this is something some people truly need and at the same time your if your budgets are a little uh, tight between the 15 to 20 lakh rupee mark this is also something that you can't go wrong with i think that's it we've explained a lot on our website you can check out that as well uh thank you so much for watching this video make sure you like it and share it subscribe to our channel follow us on our website and social media for everyday updates until then goodbye